Hi everyone, my name is Bremen Suosa Andrews. I want to talk about arsenic poisoning today and particularly nurses uh, that work in the ER or ED nurses will benefit richly from this topic. I'm sure many of you may have watched crime scene shows, uh, crime shows like ES, uh, CSI and Forensic Files showing uh, a murderer killing someone through arsenic poisoning, uh, giving them arsenic in their food or in their water. And then the person eventually dies or grows so weak um, and becomes hospitalized or unconscious. Um, I like to present to you the biochemical facts and mechanism that eventually lead to the demise of such victims who fall prey to arsenic poisoning. And hopefully we enjoy it. Um, there are two pathways I like to talk about, uh, which are carbohydrate pathways. When we eat carbohydrate-based food, basically our food um, is absorbed in the small intestines into the bloodstream, and the blood is pumped or in circulation, goes through all the other tissues that require uh, ATP, where the glucose that was absorbed into the blood is uptaking into the cells. It's metabolized basically through oxidation. Um, first of all, in a process called glycolysis, where glucose is converted to pyruvate in a 10 step uh, pathway, which we call glycolysis. Then this is taking place in the cytosol, um, which is the uh, water component aspect of the cells and then after pyruvate is formed pyruvate will move into the mitochondria which is the energy powerhouse where more atp or more energy is made out of um, the pyruvate in a cycle called krebs cycle uh, but first of all in glycolysis which uses raw material as glucose which we have in our blood uh, it's like i said 10 takes 10 steps to complete what I'm showing on the left hand side of the screen here is steps six and seven of glycolysis. In step six, remember glycolysis, the intention of glycolysis is to provide some energy um, before pyruvate goes into the Krebs cycle to provide some more energy. Um, glycolysis typically consumes two ATPs or two energy components whilst giving four ATPs or producing four ATP. So the net result at the end of glycolysis, keep in mind, is two ATPs, which is very vital for a cell that is continuously uh, metabolizing and needing energy. So as I said, this is step six and seven. In step six, glyceride three phosphate has to be converted to one three bis phosphoglycerate. Um, and the enzyme responsible for this catalysis is called glyceridiide. If you can follow the mouse, glyceridiide 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Uh, this is the enzyme. The enzyme requires uh, a PI. PI is inorganic phosphate. So the enzyme requires PI and also NAD+. NAD+, is an oxidizing agent. And that's why this enzyme is called dehydrogenase. It's removing hydrogen, and as you can see, that hydrogen is attached to the NAD right now, and there's also an extra um, hydrogen ion that's being produced. So we convert glyceride 3-phosphate to 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. That's step six. In step seven, the 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. In so doing, we have ADP getting into the reaction to produce ATP. So as you can see, in glyceride at 3 phosphate, there was just one phosphate attached to the third carbon. Glyceridehyde actually, by the way, has three carbons. So phosphate, uh, one phosphate attached to the third carbon. Uh, when we produce 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, now we see 1,3. That means that, sorry about that, 1,3. That means that we've added an extra phosphate group on the first carbon. So we now have two phosphate groups. It is the 
phosphate group on the first carbon that is combined with ADP to produce that ATP. Remember, at this point in step six, there are two glyceride, right? three phosphates that are produced. That means that we're going to have two, one, three base phosphoglycerates. That also means that we'll have two, three phosphoglycerate. And of course, we'll have two ATPs. By this time, the cell would have consumed two ATPs already. So producing these two ATPs at this step seven is very vital because that cancels out. Uh, that compensates for the two ATPs that were consumed in the beginning, uh, during the beginning of glycolysis. So this is great. This step seven is very important for all our cells. When someone uh, imbibes or ingests arsenic, the problem is that arsenic, seen here, it's just an element uh, with the, on the periodic table with atomic number 33. It's able to combine with oxygen to form the compound arsenate. Arsenate looks very much like phosphate. Remember I said uh, there is phosphate that is required to combine, to bind at uh, the active site of the glyceride 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Uh, because arsenate looks very much like phosphate arsenate competes with phosphate for the active site of this enzyme so basically where phosphate is supposed to bind to lead on to produce two atps vital atps arsenate binds at that spot so that prevents um step six and seven from happening what rather happens is that glyceride three phosphate is straight away converted all the way jumping this important step of producing one three base uh, phosphoglycerate just straight away to produce three phosphoglycerate what's the problem with this the problem with this is that the cell doesn't go through its regular channel of producing these two vital atps so that uh, detour you can call it a detour that detour from glyceride three phosphate all the way to 3 phosphoglycerate deprives the cell of these two ATPs. If the cell doesn't have ATP, so the net uh, ATP production by glycolysis is two ATPs. If you are losing these two ATPs, it means for somebody um, who is going through arsenic poisoning, he's having a half of the net production. So basically, if you consume two ATPs and you make just two ATPs at the end of glycolysis and not making these two important ATPs at this step, you are just canceling out the first two ATPs. You end up with a zero uh, ATP at the end of glycolysis. This is a bit concerning because ATP runs everything in our cells. So the person starts to feel weak because it's low on energy. It's only making, uh, it's not making any ATPs uh, any net ATPs at the end of glycolysis, which is really, really concerning. And so one of the things that makes this a big problem is that translation, if you can follow the, the um, if you can follow the mouse, translation, which uh, also means protein synthesis, all our proteins, our enzymes, um, our, many hormones are made of proteins and various other chemicals that are made of molecules that are made of proteins or are protein in nature uh, they making of protein is actually the most expensive anabolic activity protein synthesis makes up or uses up 70 percent of all our atps so for somebody who is going through arsenic poisoning what it means is that they have less atp and obviously a sudden reduction in the production of proteins. Proteins make everything, our skin, our cartilage, our tendons, um, our gum, um, our enzymes, our fingernails, everything is made uh, of most of the things, um, the molecules in our body is made of protein. So if protein make, uh, protein synthesis shuts down or slows down because you do not have enough atp 
that's going to cause the person to grow very very weak and so here i'm talking about symptoms that you should look out for uh, because most of these people will present um, at the er so if you're er nurse this is something to look out for really they come in very weak very fatigued as a first sign uh, you see changes in their skin um why why is there the changes because the proteins um within our skin um the melanin and all the other kinds of proteins are not being made so you're likely to have some lesions there will be abdominal pain because um they struggle to make enough energy um at the end of glycolysis and i'll talk about the abdominal pain a little bit more uh, after there will be nausea and vomiting because things are not just right the digestive enzymes you require are all made of proteins so if these digestive enzyme um pepsin uh, trypsin um alpha am amylases or uh, uh, salivary amylase um pancreatic amylase and all these enzymes that are required to break down the food when we eat if digestion is a problem you're gonna have vomiting you're gonna have diarrhea so they go through all that just because of the ingestion of arsenic that's very very dangerous and obviously you have tingling of their fingers why is their fingers tingling because the muscles lack energy to be able to perform and if the arsenic is provided in high quantities they could end up actually dying so what i presented here is the biochemical effect that leads to the pathological ending of uh so people who have been exposed to some levels of arsenic how arsenic affects one pathway which is the glycolytic pathway but arsenic apart from affecting or blocking the glycolytic pathway or making changes and adjustment to the glycolytic pathway unfavorable changes as you say because we are losing atp arsenic can also affect uh how the function of another cycle or another pathway called the Krebs cycle so the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate now pyruvate has to be activated and prepared to get into the so a pyruvate goes into the, from the cytosol where glycolysis took place pyruvate goes into the um the mitochondria where it undergoes a process called um a process called Krebs cycle um, pyruvate itself cannot go into the Krebs cycle it needs to be converted to acetyl coa this is acetyl coa right here to convert pyruvate to acetyl coa we need the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase you're wondering another dehydrogenase enzyme right remember the first enzyme that we talked about uh, that is blocked by arsenic it was also a kind of dehydrogenase again we see pyruvate dehydrogenase which is supposed to produce acetyl coa it's acetyl coa that can enter into the krebs cycle and the krebs cycle ends up pro providing more energy or more energy intermediates for the body and so if arsenic is blocking that particularly what arsenic does is that this arsenic binds to lipoic acid lipoic acid is one of the um one of the coenzymes that is required by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase so many enzymes in our body require either cofactors or coenzymes that help them uh to function properly and arsenic is known to bind to lipoic acid which is a notable uh coenzyme that helps pyruvate dehydrogenase to function properly what does this mean this means pyruvate cannot be converted to acetyl coa acetyl coa cannot enter into the krebs cycle and the more energy that the cell requires to function it's not produced so arsenic alone is blocking uh, or affecting the glycolytic glycolytic pathway it's also affecting the proper functioning of the krebs cycle which is we also call the citric acid cycle that's how dangerous arsenic poisoning is so basically you're losing the energy through glycolysis 
you're losing the normal energy you're supposed to get from glycolysis you're losing the normal energy you're supposed to get from the citric acid cycle and this is huge it might just mean it might it might mean that oh well these are just two pathways but consider how many cells we have in our body and all these cells together that's a huge amount of energy that the body is unable to recover because of arsenic poisoning and i think this is very very important area which um, nurses and doctors will have to have knowledge of and in terms of how to diagnose and how to treat such patients because they come in with all these activities why do we have abdominal pain here uh, as one of the symptoms abdominal pain and muscle cramps uh, this is very simple if pyruvate is not being converted so see the uh, amounts here pyruvate is not being converted to acetyl coa there is another pathway which we call lactic acid fermentation where pyruvate will rather be converted to lactic acid um to lactic acid instead of acetyl coa because obviously the enzyme that converts um the pyruvate to acetyl coa for acetyl coa to get into the citric acid cycle is now hindered because arsenate is bound to one of its most important coenzymes lipoic acid so it's not functioning so pyruvate rather takes another channel using the enzyme lactic acid dehydrogenase to produce lactic acid now lactic acid um, when it builds up actually starts chewing our tissues and our muscles and that's what leads to so these uh, patients are likely to come into the ER with a lot of abdominal pain and a lot of muscle cramps so if you see all these activities going on one of the things you can suggest to the doctor or you can start um, thinking about is this person obviously you have to eventually uh, move forward to actually test for the level of arsenic in in the individuals in the patient's blood but these are some vital signs that you can see uh, a patient presenting so uh, sometimes people think uh, biochemistry is so hard you have to memorize i've just shown you that biochemistry is not about memorization you can uh, derive very important clinical correlations from all the pathways you see so many sometimes confusing pathways in biochemistry but they can be broken down they can be made fun they can be related to um, our everyday life and um, things that are happening around us so uh, thank you for listening hope you learned something from it uh, how uh, the biochemical process of how somebody who is being poisoned through arsenic exposure to arsenic goes through before um they end up either going unconscious or or dying um if you have any questions let me know and we can discuss it a little bit more thanks for listening have a good day bye bye